Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 29 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about enhancing grid view using jQuery when deleting multiple rows. In part 28, we discussed about deleting multiple rows from grid view. Please watch part 28 before proceeding with this video. Now, if you remember, in part 28, we have written code, you know, so that when I you know, check the checkbox within the header. Look at this. All the checkboxes within the data rows of the grid view are automatically checked. On the other hand, if I uncheck that, these are unchecked. Okay. So every time I check or uncheck a checkbox within this grid view control, the web form is posted back to the server and we are doing the processing on the server side. So every time a web form is posted back to the server, the web form has to be reprocessed, generate the HTML, send it back to the client. Okay, so instead of that, I want to use JavaScript to toggle the selection of these checkboxes within the grid view control. This is going to improve performance and, exp and user experience. That's because the processing is done on the client without posting back to the server. So this is definitely going to improve performance and thereby user experience. Let's see how to achieve this. So obviously, I want to use jQuery with this one, you know, to achieve this. Uh, the first thing is we don't want the web form to be posted back to the server when the selection in the checkbox changes. Okay. Now the web form is posting back because we have set auto post back property of the checkbox within the header and within the data row, you know, to true. So let's turn that to false or let's remove that auto post back attribute altogether. So within the header template, you know, we have a template field where we have header template and item template. So within the header template, I have this checkbox. All I need to do is get rid of this auto post back property or set it to false. Okay. And again, we don't want, you know, the server side method to, to process this for us. So I'm going to get rid of this on checked changed even handler method as well. Okay, so we have removed the auto post back property and we have removed the event handler that is associated with this checkbox. Whenever the you know check the status of the checkbox changes, it's going to be posted back to the server. And there is an event handler method within the code behind file. Let's go ahead and get rid of that as well. So checkbox delete header checked change. We don't need this event handler anymore. So let me get rid of that. And now let's do the same thing for the checkbox that's present within the item template. So let's get rid of auto post back property and the even handler method. All right. And then within the code behind file, let's delete that method as well. Checkbox delete checked changed. We no longer need that method. All right. So those are the changes that we need to do. And then since we want to use jQuery, you know, let me drag and drop this jQuery file. Okay, jQuery dash uh, 1.4.1.min.js. Now, if you're new to jQuery, don't worry. We, we will talk about jQuery in detail in a later video session. So let me drag and drop this jQuery file here. Okay. All right. So at this time, if I go ahead and run this application, you know, uh, the checkboxes are not going to work at all. Look at this. I check this. Nothing happens. The web form will not be posted back to the server and nothing happens at all. That's because we have not written the code. Okay. So let's go ahead. The first thing is, you know, when I check this checkbox within the header, we want all these checkboxes to be automatically selected. On the other hand, if I deselect it, they should be automatically deselected. And to achieve that, I have written some JavaScript code. Let me copy that and paste it within you know, first of all, since we want to write some JavaScript within the head section, we need to use the script tag. And I'm going to specify the type as text slash JavaScript and language is going to be JavaScript. So within that, I'm going to paste this function. And this is very simple function here. I'm using jQuery selectors, you know, which makes the selection of the controls on the web form very much easy. OK, so here I'm calling the function as toggle selection using header checkbox. OK, so I have this header checkbox. I want to toggle the selection of the checkboxes within the uh, data rows of the grid view control using that header checkbox. When I check that, automatically check all these. If I uncheck that, uncheck all these. So toggle selection using header checkbox. And I'm passing this a parameter, a source. That source is going to be the header checkbox. Okay. 
Now look at what am I doing. You know, I hardly have one line of code here. I mean, very simple to understand. So if you look at the ID of the grid view control, it's grid view one. So we are using hash means, you know, the ID selector within jQuery. So within grid view one, find all input elements whose name attribute ends with CB delete. Okay, now this may sound a little complicated at this time. So what I'm basically saying is within this grid view one, find all the checkboxes who has name of CB delete. That's what the selector mean here. Actually, the name should end with CB delete. Okay, now the important thing to notice here, if I right click on this page and then when I say view page source, look at this, these checkboxes, all of them are actually rendered as input elements. So you can see that that's the input element, that's the ID. Don't worry about ID, look at the name attribute. So it's ending, that's the delete header, that's the checkbox within the header. But then if you look at the other checkboxes within the data rows, for example, this is the one which is displaying data, Mark, Mail, uh, and London. And if you look at the checkbox here, look at the name, it's ending with CB delete. Okay, so basically what we are doing, find all the checkboxes whose name ends with CB delete, and then loop through each of them. And then look at that, what are we doing? You know, this checkbox has an attribute called checked. Okay, set that value to whatever is the value going to be the source, you know, the checked property of the source. So what is source here? The source is going to be the header. So if the header checkbox is checked, then set the, you know, all these checkboxes to check. If it is unchecked, then all of them will be unchecked. So that's what these two lines mean. It's very simple. Okay, so obviously we need to use this function. So let me copy this function and then use that within our checkbox, you know, that's present within the header template. So what I basically want to do is I want to hook this up with on click event of that checkbox control. So I'm going to call this function, but remember this function has a parameter. We need to pass in the source. The source is going to be this checkbox itself. So I'm simply going to say this. Okay, so that's it. If I run this now, when the web form loads and when I change the selection within the header, look at what's going to happen. It is automatically selecting them. I unselect that, automatically unselecting them. Now, the important thing to notice here is that the web form is not posting back to the server. Everything is happening on the client side. Okay, but then there is another problem here. Look at this. If I uncheck any of these checkboxes, you know, the checkbox within the header should be automatically unchecked, but then it's not happening. Okay. On the other hand, if I start checking all of them, you know, when I select the last one available, this checkbox should be automatically selected. But again, that's not happening. Why? Because we have not written code for that. Let's see the, you know, the function that's required to achieve that. Again, just to speed things up, I have that already typed. So let me copy that and paste it within our Visual Studio and then we'll go over the code. So this is the other function that we have. So what should happen, you know, when the selection here changes, you know, depending on whether if I have selected all of them or at least one is unchecked, we want to, you know, control the selection of the checkbox within the header. Okay. And again, this is very intelligently written. You know, if you look at this function, this is very simple again. So basically what we are doing here, so toggle selection of header checkbox. So within grid view one, find all input elements, input meaning checkbox elements, find all checkbox, you know, in our case now at the moment, they, we, it's checkbox, input can be anything basically, it can be a text box also, uh, but in our case we are referring to them, uh, you know, to checkboxes, so input elements where name ends with CB delete. So we are, we are getting the length of all those elements, meaning how many elements do I have that has, you know, an input element whose name ends with CB delete. So if you look at this here, at the moment I have six checkboxes. Okay, all of these checkboxes, their name attribute ends with CB delete. And then what we are saying is, so those are six elements. And look at the line. If that is equal to this is very much similar to this line. So the same thing, grid view one, all input elements with name CB delete, but whose you know, which are checked. I want all those 
check input check boxes i mean check box elements who which are checked okay and we are getting the length of that so if if the check boxes you know these check boxes if they are the, the number of check boxes are equal to the number of check boxes that are checked then we know for sure all of these check boxes are checked in which case we are actually setting the checked status of the checkbox you know who has an ID I mean name of CB delete header to true otherwise we are setting that to false it's as simple as that okay so this is the main logic that we need to understand if the number of checkboxes here is equal to the number of checkboxes that are checked then we know for sure all of these are checked in which case select this otherwise unselect this okay and that's what we are doing here okay now obviously we need to call this function now this function doesn't take any parameters so obviously any time you know when I change the selection here that's when I need to call that function so within this you know item template let's use the on click function so I mean event so on click of the checkbox I want to call that function so let's run this now now the other piece also should work when I start selecting these you know automatically the header should be selected if I un deselect even one checkbox look at that it's automatically deselected I select this everything so now the selection within the grid view control is working fine without issues okay the final thing that is left out is basically to get you know this JavaScript alert which is again very easy at the moment we don't have any alert whatsoever if I select that I click delete button look at that one row deleted okay if I don't select anything it says no rows selected to delete but this is happening on the server side now if if I haven't selected any rows then I should get a message you know from the client itself without even posting back to the server saying no rows selected and look at this here I am getting an alert box and here I am getting a confirmation with OK and cancel buttons so when I click OK here it should not post back to the server when I click OK in the second you know if you look at the second image here I've selected all the rows so when I click delete it should ask it would it should prompt me three rows will be deleted and then when I click OK that's when it should post back to the server delete those through three rows otherwise if I click cancel it shouldn't post back okay so here in the first uh, case I want an alert in the second case I want a confirm dialog confirmation dialog box okay so let's see how to achieve this and obviously again I have a very simple jQuery function here so let me copy that and paste it into Visual Studio and then we'll explain that so here I hook, I'm hooking up the function directly with the event you know here with the, with the function itself so I'm using the classic document dot ready uh, function of the jQuery so um, and within that what we are doing I have this button so on the web form this is the button and if you look at the ID of the button it is BT and delete so that's the button here BT and delete so what I'm saying is so find that element and to the click so when I click that button what do I want to do I want to call this function and if you look at this function it's it's pretty straightforward so within the grid view control find you know the check boxes okay the check boxes with name CB delete that end with name CB delete and that are checked get the length of them okay so I'm storing that in this row selected variable if that row selected is zero then we know for sure you know the user has not selected anything in which case we want to show an alert uh, box you know to the user with just the ok bun you know uh, button so I'm I'm showing that using that alert JavaScript function and then look at this I am using this line return false why is this required because if you don't return false when you click OK on that alert function the web form will be posted back to the server we don't want the web form to be posted back to the server you know when once I click OK on that alert box that's why I am returning false on the other hand if row selected is not zero then we want a message you know three rows will be deleted or two rows will be deleted depending on how many ever rows we have selected so to get that so I'm using that row selected variable which is carrying the number of rows and then I am appending to that rows will be deleted message 
and I look at this I'm using a confirm JavaScript function here which will automatically show a dialog box with OK and cancel when I click OK that confirm function is going to return true otherwise it will return false in which case the web form will not be posted to the server so pretty simple and straightforward now since we have associated this function directly to the click event I don't have to hook this up to the button it's already hooked up here okay so let's run this now and we are done so look at this when I click delete I get that no row selected I click OK notice that the web form is not posted back to the server on the other hand I select all the rows I click you know delete look at that five rows will be deleted so I only have five rows look at that it, the check the header checkbox is not taken into consideration only the data rows there are five data rows and all five of them will be deleted I click cancel look at that the web form will not be posted back when I click OK that's when the web form will be posted back and then deleted let's actually delete only a few rows uh, two rows here so two rows will be deleted I click OK look at that I get that message two rows deleted all right on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.